Was that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. But man, you can't deny that view. Wait, wait. Everyone be quiet. Get away from the windows. Well, certainly seems to be the month for reboots, remakes, and remasters. We've had the reboot for Saints Row, lol. The remake for Destroy All Humans 2, and now another supposed remake for The Last of Us on PS5. I ain't buying it. Because out of all the things that Naughty Dog and Sony could be throwing resources at, apparently a remake of a nine-year-old game is on top of that list. Whether or not you love it or hate it though, I don't think you can really deny that The Last of Us was a pretty monumental game for the time. And it's pretty hard to deny the impact that it had on the industry. It managed to take the third person shooter formula that really had become so run of the mill by that point and turn it on its head. Telling this story about a world gone to hell and putting you in the shoes of a guy who had one of the shakiest moral codes of all time. Supplies were tight, combat was violent and frantic, and it's really one of the few games to really deserve that R18 rating. We just didn't really have many games back then that told such a morally grey story, and Joel is about as far removed from a hero as you could possibly get. Still kind of funny to me how Naughty Dog started off by making games about a fruit-eating bandicoot to a game like this where you are stomping bandits' heads in and having your throat ripped out by blind, fungal-infected zombies. It went on to become one of the most defining games of the generation and a bit of a solid argument for owning a PS3 over an Xbox 360. And then, barely a year or so later, it got remastered for the PS4. Not to mention in 2020, we also got the sequel, but... Yeah, don't get me started on that. Whatever it is you heard, it ain't true, okay? Well, now it's been revived again for the PlayStation 5 with this so-called remake. And I guess the first big question is, is the whole thing worth it? I mean, is this worth your hard-earned dollary dues? I think first off, the easiest answer to that question from one perspective is yes. I mean, look, if you haven't played this game before, well, then it's a bit of a no-brainer. Go pick it up right now. <laughs> For everyone else though, you know, people like me who played it on the PS3 and the PS4, well, that is a bit harder to answer. And the main thought that kept coming back to me throughout the 10 or so hours I spent playing through this again was, is this something that really needed to be remade in the first place? Now, I'm not going to go back and review that original game. I mean, I think everyone knows what it's about at this point, and anyone watching this video has probably had their mind made up on whether they love it or hate it. I want to focus more on the remake itself, and that really brings me on to my first talking point, which is about this whole remake versus remaster argument. Now, I know the difference between a remake and a remaster. Believe me, I really do. And to the best of my knowledge, video game remasters are older games that have been updated visually to make them look more up to date. A company like Night Dive Studios is a good example of someone who focuses on this. They'll take an old game from the 90s or the early 2000s, add a bunch of bells and whistles to its presentation, improve the frame rate, and allow it to be run on modern hardware. They did this pretty well, I think, with Turok 1 and 2, Doom 64, and even more recently with Quake. A remake, though, is taking an old game and completely overhauling it from top to bottom. It's, it's great news. Not only the visuals, but also the gameplay. I just did a video on Destroy All Humans 2 like a few days ago, and this is a perfect example. In its heyday, it was one of the best games for the platform, but trying to play it now in 2022 is definitely going to feel a bit rough around the edges. So, the game got remade, in an entirely new engine with updated mechanics. And I should care, because... Now it's like playing an entirely different game, and all of the clunkiness of that old Xbox version is completely gone. Replaced with a smooth, modern experience that I think anyone can pick up and enjoy. But it still keeps the same vibe of the original, so people will hopefully still reconnect with what made it resonate with them all those years ago. And I mean, look, this isn't an isolated example either. And plenty of remakes that we've had in recent years have done the same thing. I mean, the remakes for Resident Evil 2 and 3, for instance. You know, same overall premise and story, but massively overhauled mechanics and gameplay to make them more accessible. You know, for people who don't have access to the original consoles that those games released on. Now, keeping all of that in mind, can someone please explain to me then how this version of The Last of Us is being called the remake? When as far as I can tell, it's just the exact same game from 2013, or, you know, 2014 if you want to be pedantic, just with improved graphics. 
I get that it's been entirely rebuilt into the latest version of their engine, but if we're going off the basis of a remaster being little more than just improved visuals, well, then shouldn't this be classified and priced this way? I feel sick. Okay, well, apparently also according to Naughty Dog, the gameplay has had an upgrade too, mostly in regards to the AI and the physics. But I gotta say that after having spent about 10 hours with each version, the PS5 and the PS3, I really can't see that much of a difference. <laughs> Would have been nice if they could have gone back through and improved some of those ridiculous difficulty spikes to make them feel a bit more genuine. I still lament having to play through the financial district and that whole section stuck upside down as Joel almost again made me want to throw my PS5 controller through the goddamn window. If they're going to take the time to build the entire game from scratch and redo all the character models in the environments, which would take an insane amount of time, surely doing a couple of once-overs on some of those more egregious sections would have been on the checklist too, right? Well, I don't know, guess not. Take a breath. Who's dead? But hey, check out that updated rain effect and how good looking those water refractions are. Makes for nice Twitter clout when you upload a screenshot to your 12 followers, doesn't it? All right. We're good, come on up. And I suppose that's what it's really about though. Another shiny blue case for PS5 owners to hang up on their shelf next to their Neil Druckmann shrine. And look man, don't get me wrong, if all you care about is how much better this looks compared to the original, well, then this won't disappoint. Take cover! Fuck this. Take cover! Your watch is broken. Your watch is broken. You reckon you can handle that? Well, I sort of shot a rifle before. You reckon you can handle that? Well, I sort of shot a rifle before. Anyone who pretends that this game doesn't look amazing is either delusional or needs to get their eyesight checked. Kinda weird too how I had this idea in my head of how the original game looked, especially considering it's probably been about 8 or 9 years since I last played it. And it's like once you stop doing something for a period of time, you almost start to romanticize it in your head a little bit, making it out to be more than it is, like the first time you tried craft beer or got a hand job. But then once you go back and revisit it, it makes it evident that it's very much a thing of the past. That's how I felt going back and replaying The Last of Us on the PS3. I really remember it almost looking true to life, and though it does still look pretty decent, when you start to compare the scenes from the remake to the original, you really can see the jump that they've made here. I ain't been out here in a while. The remake has a fidelity mode and a performance mode, with fidelity mode running at 4K resolution and 40 frames per second, while the performance mode has a more adaptive resolution, but manages to maintain a smooth 60 FPS pretty much the entire time. But I just can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want to play this at 60 FPS all the time. Considering that that 4K mode has considerable input delay. I mean, it feels like it has input delay either way, but it is noticeably worse on the 4K mode. I mean, shit, son, if you want to play it at 30 frames per second, well, just go back and replay it on the PS3. And can I also point out how we're in 2022 and consoles still can't maintain 4K graphics at 60 FPS yet. Playing a game like this at a high resolution is kind of like revving your car engine up when you're waiting at the traffic lights. You think you're really cool and impressing everyone around you, but the cold hard truth is that nobody cares. And instead, everyone just thinks that you've got a small wang, which you do, bitch. You're right about that. They're the same picture. I do find it kind of odd though how out of every single character in the game, the one that they changed the most for this remake was Tess, to the point now that it really doesn't even look like the same character anymore. Now we tried. Let's just go home. I'm not... I'm not going anywhere. Now we tried. Let's just go home. I'm not... I'm not going anywhere. The fuck is that? Now she looks considerably older and I'd just love to know why the hell they did this. Either way though, you won't be unimpressed with the visuals, from the things like the water and the rain effects which do look gorgeous through to the improved lighting. In fact, there's now lighting in areas that never had lighting to begin with. Usually those spore infested areas where you're walking around with a gas mask on and your vision looked like it was smeared with shit. 
So you do at least get a sense of there being some thought put into going back and correcting some of these initial missteps they might have taken. I guess I just kind of wish that they would have also carried this across to some of the gameplay side of things too. And that's what it really all boils down to, the gameplay. And despite the claims they make about the gameplay being updated, I can't help but feel I'm playing a game from 2013, a game that I've already beaten three times. Shotgun. Yeah, I was one of those losers who beat this game on hard and then survivor difficulty because I had this weird ennui with Naughty Dog games at the time. Like, I felt I had to beat them on the hardest difficulty modes. And I think out of all of them, The Last of Us is easily the most crushing with Uncharted 1, I think, a close second. Oh, shit. And then, like, even more of a pathetic dipshit, I beat it again on that stupid DLC difficulty mode that they brought out. Because at that time, I was unemployed, broken, not depressed enough as I was, apparently. So punishing myself further in a video game seemed like a good idea at the time. My point is, I like to think I know how this game plays, and if I had have actually paid 70 bucks for this remake, well, I would have kind of felt cheated for throwing my money at what still feels like a nine-year-old game. This... Is a nail bomb. What I do think is kind of cool though is the abundance of difficulty and accessibility options that the game's brought across from The Last of Us 2. You can now fine tune all these different aspects of the game, from the reaction times of enemies, the amount of resources you can find through to how useful your allies are. There's also a whole shitload of features here to make the game more playable for people who have various disabilities. And look, I'm not going to heap crap on a game for being more inclusive. I mean, that's like complaining about a building putting in a wheelchair ramp. I remember reading that a blind person was able to beat the second game, and that's pretty fucking awesome, man. I dare anyone to find fault in that. It's just making sure that it can be played by as many people as possible so we can all be miserable together, drowning in the game's incredibly depressing story and premise. You know what? This isn't that bad. They've also updated the user interface, but some of these I'd actually argue are to the game's detriment. When you came across locked safes in the original, all you needed to do was find the combination in a note nearby somewhere, and then the safe would open automatically. Easy. Now though, you've got to manually input the code yourself, which yes, I understand this is how it was in the sequel, and it isn't like an outright bad idea, but it's like, do I really need to be sitting here for that extra 10 to 15 seconds doing this? It just doesn't really add anything new to the experience, and it just reminds me how modern games have no consideration for the player's time, as do all these repetitive sequences where I need to carry a ladder, a plank of wood, or move a trash dumpster for the umpteenth time. I need you to... I know. I don't know if I'm more used to the PS3 controller than the PS5 one, but I really found too that I missed a lot of my shots in this new version, and that never seemed to be an issue that I had as much in the original. By default too, now a lot of the buttons are swapped around, with L2 and R2 for aiming and shooting replaced with fuck. With L2 and R2 for aiming and shooting as opposed to L1 and R1 in the original. And certain button mashing sequences that required, well, you know, button mashing, now instead required you to hold down the button instead. I think the swimming controls are way worse in this version too, and I don't know what it is about this either, but I just seem to really struggle with swimming here, and the fact that underwater it's now a lot harder to get your bearings sure didn't help. Yes, I understand that trying to see underwater in a shit stained sewer in real life is probably next to impossible, but a little bit of suspension of disbelief is allowed in video games, okay? Especially if it allows me to actually see where I'm going. <laughs> No matter the changes they make though, whether they be the surface level ones or a bit deeper with the AI, this is still The Last of Us and that comes with the good old fashioned Last of Us bullshit. Wait a minute. It's always amazed me how The Last of Us is supposed to be this super hardcore resource strict game where you only ever have a handful of bullets and you're encouraged to avoid combat half the time only for the campaign to then force you into these frequent combat encounters where you have to fight and use your hard earned resources. <laughs> I still remember there's sections in the game where even if you manage to stealth it all the way to the exit, the game won't let you move on until everyone's dead. Yeah, and guess what? Those sections are still alive and kicking in the remake. Look, buddy, don't do anything stupid now. These are the things that pissed me off in 2013, and they still piss me off now in 2022. Kind of stuff that makes me sick. Makes me sick! <laughs> You know, there's also games that are a joy to replay, games that take you on an experience that you're happy to take again and again. 
Max Payne, for instance, is one of those games for me. I mean, I finished it like a bazillion times and I know it like the back of my balls. But I still enjoy that journey of going from an undercover cop, going up against the mafia, to being seriously out of my depth and uncovering a government conspiracy. A bit closer to heaven. The Last of Us just isn't one of those games to me. I mean, it definitely takes you on a journey, but it's also an emotional roller coaster with no real payoff. You start off playing the game as a shitty person, you pretty much ruin the lives of everyone you interact with, and then you come out of it at the end, arguably an even shittier one. Guess what? We're shitty people, Joel. It's been that way for a long time. No, we are survivors. This is our to me, this just isn't one of those games. It's a lot of fun to replay. You know, for the same reason, I don't really go back to rewatch movies like Schindler's List or Requiem for a Dream. And as I was replaying this, I'd always get to that next big set piece, and it was like, oh, that's right, this bit again. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I've got like PTSD thinking about that section where you're upside down as Joel from Grounded Difficulty Mode, and also that financial district bit where Ellie's supposed to be assisting you, but instead you're just kind of wondering what the fuck she's up there doing the entire time. You seem to know your way around a gun. The Last of Us is a game that makes you feel miserable by design, and I'll admit that out of this one and the sequel, there is something at least kind of wholesome about the building relationship between Joel and Ellie, as you get to see both of them let their guard down for different reasons and eventually become emotionally attached. Teamwork. But I just don't feel like watching that play out anymore over the 15 or so hours it takes to get through the campaign and all the updated character models, concrete, water, and grass textures ain't gonna change my mind. So again, it all comes back to that question, you know, like, who is this supposed to be for? Well, like I said to begin with, I suppose people who never played the games to begin with. Even though at this point, I think that demographic has to be insanely small, especially among the people who own a PS5. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of shit throughout my YouTube comments in the past as if I hate Sony or something, which is pretty hilarious if you saw the games I had on my shelves. But the truth is that they just seem to make games which prioritize presentation over other deeper gameplay mechanics. The fact this game plays the same as it did in 2013 could tell us two things. Firstly, just that the gameplay has aged that well that it still holds up, which, yeah, I suppose could be true to some extent. But more likely, I think it just shows how much the industry has stagnated, and that all it takes is moving something across to the latest platform and updating the visuals to justify asking people to spend money on it. All this really made me realize though was that we still don't have a PC port for this thing. Yeah, I know it's in the works, but out of all the cheap deaths I suffered from clickers or those bullshit bandits, that might have been the thing that made me the most upset of all. <laughs> But at least with this first game, we don't have to sit through Joel being beat to death with a golf club, so at least it's got that going for him. 